Expose Karine Jean-Pierre's shocking press conference. Keeping you informed and engaged. Now more than ever. This is Seculo. We want to hear from you. Share and post your comments. Or call 1-800-684-3110. And now your host, Jordan Seculo. All right, welcome to Seculo. We are taking your phone calls. 1-800-684-3110. That's 1-800-684-3110. You heard about the United States taking this abstention at the United Nations on a vote involving Israel. Now, I want to put this into context. Three times before the U.S. voted uh, against this kind of resolution on Israel, calling for a ceasefire that doesn't condemn Hamas, nor does it require or even ask Hamas to turn and to give over the the hostages that still remain, which is estimated around 100. Yep, Some of those are alive. Some might be bodies, but it's still a very large number. And that was excluded from the language. So the U.S., the last three times, vetoed. Voted against this, and it didn't pass. But this time at the United Nations, the United States decided we'll go along with the language that doesn't include the hostages being released, that doesn't condemn Hamas and their acts of terrorism on October 7th that led to the conflict that is still ongoing. And by doing so, this resolution moves forward. Now, a resolution from the Security Council is a step in the wrong direction against Israel. But what we're most concerned about and why we're watching it very carefully through our team, uh, both at ACLJ Jerusalem, our international team, our NGO, you know, our NGO status at the UN, is that the United States making these moves politically over time, especially when it comes to the Biden administration and the left. And we can play for you because Karine Jean-Pierre was asked directly about it. It sounds like... You're playing politics with this because you've now changed your policy, what, based on 18 to 29-year-olds who are protesting at their college campuses? Take a listen. This is not about politics. It's not. The president does not lead his national security or things that are the right thing to do in this sense, right, getting that hostage deal, making sure uh, hostages come home, including, as I said, over and over again, American hostages getting that humanitarian aid into Gaza and making sure that it, it, we believe that would lead to a ceasefire. That is not about politics. That is about the right thing to do. Logan, it, none, the language doesn't include getting the hostages out, and it doesn't include uh, uh, Hamas, no condemnation of Hamas. All it does is say if they get humanitarian aid in, maybe, maybe then Hamas will do something good. And we've seen time over time, they've gotten humanitarian aid in this entire time, and they sell it or steal it. Yeah, we know where it's actually going. That's been the concern the entire time. And sure, I mean, maybe there's part of them going, you know what, we're not going to be able to get them to free uh, the hostages, so whatever, throw in the towel. But it's sad when this is the, the place we got to uh, in America, where you're able to say, okay, let's take out all the all the rough language. What was the rough language? Uh, getting hostages out. You know, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, this idea, again, we're going to take your calls, this 1-800-684-3110. This is a clear move by the Biden administration. Looking at uh, their poll numbers, which are not good in younger voters where they typically, the left relies on, it's not just the college vote either, Logan, that we're talking about. We're talking, a lot of people say 18 to 29. I'd say it's more like 18 to 40, 18 to 39, really. And we've seen a shift uh, in yeah, I would even uh, say, the Christian community. We've yeah. seen a shift amongst, uh, definitely on college campuses, getting more radical in support of, uh, and, and anti-Israel, but in support of Palestinian causes, regardless of the brutality of the attack on October 7th. It didn't take long for everybody to just forget October 7th and just focus on the fact that Israel on Israel's response as if they're just attacking Gaza for no for reason. No, for no reason. And I think you're right in that age demographic. I think you may be excused a little older where you have people that are in college now, like I said, maybe you know, up through adults. If you're on the left, yeah. essentially, you have to be. This is your talking point. You become that, anti-Israel. That's, part that, of that's, your, your, yeah. that's your part of your platform now. Yeah. And so I want to take your calls, that one 800 684 to the fact that this used to be an issue that united Republican and Democrats, and now there's only a handful of Democrats left in both the House and the Senate that stand with Israel. There are a handful, but they are dwindling. We'll take your calls, 1-800-684-3110. Support the work of the ACLJ through our Life and Liberty a Challenge. Go to aclj.org right now. Be part of it. Donations tripled today. 
Israeli prime minister is defending his decision not to send a high-level delegation to Washington. That followed the U.S. abstaining from a vote on the U.N. Security Council uh, for a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. My decision not to send the delegation to Washington in the wake of that resolution was a message to Hamas. It was a message, first and foremost, to Hamas. Don't bet on this pressure. It's not going to work. Biden campaign officials, they will acknowledge that this is something that, A, they're taking seriously and keeping an eye on, and B, they're recognizing that it is impacting the president's support. <laughs> Everybody deserves health care. They have a point. We need to get a lot more care into the Gaza. No way that they can um, appease a lot of these protesters and, and members of their coalition. This is not about politics. It's not. The president does not lead his national security or things that are the right thing to do in this sense, right? Getting that hostage deal, making sure uh, hostages come home, including, as I said over and over again, American hostages getting that humanitarian aid into Gaza and making sure that it, it, we believe that would lead to a ceasefire. That is not about politics. Past Joe Biden supporters who are growing increasingly frustrated with him over his Israel policy. It is a terrible decision for America. It's a terrible decision for Israel. And it will drive a great many Jewish Democrats like me away from voting for the Biden administration. Where are the Democrats having their convention this year? Chicago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can't wait. Yeah, and, and just as Amisha <laughs> says, there's a large uh, Palestinian-American population yep. in Chicago. Uh, are we headed for real trouble for the Democrats I, in Chicago I expect this year? there to be some protests, assuming that this uh, conflict is still going on. There hasn't been some resolution by then. Welcome back to Secular. We are taking your calls, too, on Israel, 1-800-684-3110. And the, this response from the United States and the Biden administration, what I'm concerned about is that by the time we get to election, uh, they're going to be not just abstaining on votes, but they're going to be, like, voting against Israel at the United Nations. So they've already guard from, from voting against these bad resolutions for Israel, so that was good. But they've got, moved from that to abstaining. And then the likely next move is that you you are so upset by if Israel continues this, what I believe is justified war against Hamas until they deliver those hostages and cease their attacks on Israel, uh, that eventually, if uh, you know they don't do this resolution, are you going to actually go and vote yes to start actually condemning Israel? Are you going to join those countries at the United Nations? Is the U.S. going to join in that? I mean, it's, a, it's, it's the likely next step if this administration certainly Gets another four years in the White House. That's right. And look, we'd love to hear from you and your thoughts. 1 800 684 3110. 1 800 684 3110. We also want to tell you, we are, you know, this is obviously a holiday tomorrow, a yep. uh, good Friday for a lot of people. So, a lot of, for a lot of you, this will be the last you'll hear from us this week. Uh, we want to make sure you know about our Life and Liberty Drive, and we do have a special opportunity for those for these last three days. That's right. Every donation right now, we've been able to say they're doubled. We are right now in a triple. Match. That's right. A triple match. So that means if you give twenty dollars, not only does it become four, it becomes sixty dollars of value to the ACLJ because there are so many members out there really ready to commit and match their funds. And this couldn't come at a more critical time. But again, all the donations today and for the next few days are doubled. Or I'm sorry, are tripled. I'm not used to saying tripled because it's such a wild thing. But your donations are tripled right now. This triple match during the Life and Liberty Drive, sort of the, the the grand finale of it for this month. And I want to make sure you you realize that, again, that means your $20, that's 60 this time. And uh, if it's $50, that's uh, $150 to ACLJ. You can also, at the same time, uh, be part of the match and, and become an ACLJ champion. So you can choose the amount that you're comfortable donating each month automatically. That could be $30. But this time around, the, that this will be that'll be worth ninety dollars uh, to the ACLJ, and we're only what Logan? I think we're only eighty nine new champions away from our stretch goal, which would I don't know exactly. That what would take us twenty thousand five hundred. Is twenty thousand five hundred? Was, the so it was adding an additional five hundred to we were trying to hit twenty thousand total. Yep. And we were trying to hit, once we hit that midway through the month, we would love to hit five hundred more. 
as a stretch goal, and we are, are on the edge with only 89. There's more people watching on Rumble or on YouTube right now. Y'all could do that for us today. Right. You could push us over that edge. And you can cancel at any time, by the way. And you get to choose at the level of which you become an ACLJ champion. You pretty much I think it's $5 and up. And however you want to decide, right. that's up for you. And I think it's, I think it's that minimum just because of processing fees. And those today things. that $5 is 15 So, I mean, uh, think about becoming an ACLJ champion today. 15 because, in value. Yeah, yeah, 15 in value to the ACLJ because of that triple match so oh, we're again. actually only 86 away so we just had an update 86 away you guys can do this for us we'd appreciate it go to aclj.org yeah, we're and doing this really today more uh, a little focus on the fundraising because of course with good friday and easter sunday uh we know many of you including us will be busy with uh, uh religious uh and family celebrations yeah exactly it's easter uh we're gonna uh, play tomorrow uh, if you remember we had uh, jeremiah johnston his book body yeah of if Proof. you missed that broadcast uh, i was talking to him this morning it. we're gonna play that uh he's a book out about the proof of the resurrection of Jesus. You should take a look at that. Uh, we're going to play that tomorrow, though, on the broadcast. Um, he's been making the rounds. I heard him on Glenn Beck yesterday. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because he Christian talks Radio. about this is like the only Sunday that we really uh, kind of talk about the, the, this whole idea of of the re- the resurrection and, and that we don't really get too deep into it because, uh, again, it's it's is it more faith-based? Is it more – is there historical – is there evidence-based? And, and he talks about the mix of both. And I, I think, again, it's so critical to the to the actual Christian faith. It's not just that we do good works, but we have, yeah, to, have a, be, there has to be a faith component to your faith. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, there is a spiritual side of this. There is a supernatural side right. to all of this. And we encourage you to watch that. We're going to also have more great content as well uh, over the weekend. It's not like we're going away or doing anything, but we are. Obviously, this is Easter holiday for a lot of people. Uh, that's why today we're spending so much time talking about the work of the ACLJ. Yeah. You're going to hear... Uh, and see some of what we were doing in the UN with CC Heil around the world this week. You're going to see that today. We have a lot packed in, but it is important time, as you said, during this triple match, support the work of the ACLJ. Obviously, we would talk. The reason we, we, you may be joining us right now on YouTube. A lot of you just joined. You may have seen the headline, Jordan, of the, you know, our headline right now is exposed. KJP shocking press conference. I think we should restate what happened and what we can do about it. Sure. So at this press conference, uh, Karine Jean Pierre said, uh, it was after the U.N. Uh, Security Council vote, the U.S., of course, decided to abstain on a vote that uh, called for a ceasefire uh, in the war in Israel and Hamas. This this was a ceasefire that did not require, um, it does not require any kind of uh, release of hostages, nor does it condemn Hamas for their attacks on October 7th. The entire reason Israel is still engaged in this conflict, which, yes, is uh, of course, is uh, endangering the lives of Palestinians in Gaza because of what happened October 7th. They have to respond as a sovereign nation, and they still haven't got all of their hostages back. If Hamas wanted most of this conflict to come to a close, they would get those 100 hostages, whether some are bodies and some are alive, to the, to, to Israel, and guess what? Palestinian citizens would probably not be facing any more uh, of these air raids, at least for a period of time, if Hamas also stopped firing at Israel. That's all they have to do. But they're unwilling to do that, and they've got the U.N. backing them, saying they can keep hostages, they can keep firing on Israel, but Israel's got to stop. And the U.S. has voted no on that resolution yeah. three times because of that. It makes no sense. This top vote, they just abstained, which means it moved forward. So... They're very close to making a vote that is actually anti-Israel at the United Nations, going a step further than the than the Obama Biden administration. Uh, and they're right, especially I think if you give another four years, it's because of people like AOC. It's this is even though there's only five or six of these members of Congress that are in Congress, Logan elected. This is the base of the Democrat Party right now. They all are echoing her message. Take a listen to her last week on the House floor, bite one. If you want to know what an unfolding genocide looks like, open your eyes. It looks like the forced famine of 1.1 million innocents. We must write our story in this moment of what it means and who we are as Americans. And our story must be not that we were good men who did nothing. You know, first of all, the genocide or what she's trying to determine is the genocide. The, the, the 1. million people she's talking about are not all innocents. 
they decided to elect a terror group years ago. They've decided to allow that terror group to uh, be part of their families. I mean, I think with, within families in the Gaza Strip, maybe there's connections within all of them to, to Hamas. They did that with doctors. They did that with the UN Re- Refugee and Relief Agency. And it was like one out of every 10 employees had a direct, was working for Hamas. One, one out of you know 90 percent of employees had a family member as part of Hamas. So she says 1.1 million innocents. I, these are all people who are celebrating using their what happened their on October 7th. And th- Logan, you don't get to go into a sovereign country, rape, murder, and kill, take hostages, and expect a sovereign country like Israel not to respond. And that response to be pretty darn harsh. And I want to say, there's a reason we're still actively working. I'm, I read all the comments, or as many as I can. They go by fast, with thousands of you watch. And there are some people like, well, I'm waiting to know, vo- I'm voting for Trump. It's like, we have to be proactively working right now. Number one, of course, it's no guarantee President Trump wins. You got to keep going. Number two, the work can't stop because this is people's lives on the lines. Oh, yeah. it, it, a, lot, it, a lot of horrible things to Israel could happen between now and, and January, and January. At, at best case scenario, you know, this is uh, best case scenario is the U.S. stays, maybe just abstains, but that means these resolutions are going to start moving forward. And Security Council resolutions aren't like General Assembly resolutions. At some point, you could you could have, um, you could envision they they throw in peacekeepers. They've done it before. They did in Lebanon, and you know what those peacekeepers do? They help uh, Hezbollah target Israelis. Yeah, and you may not, and, and the U.S. may have a better I point of view. Thing in law, in my in my LM degree in Georgetown on how the peacekeepers uh, between Israel and Hezbollah on the Lebanese border uh, during one of their last conflicts were literally pointing out for Hezbollah the Israel locations so that Hezbollah could target and kill those Israeli troops. Our executive producer Will brought up a good point, was also, which is also if Trump is to win, then you have a couple months there where it could be an all-out war from the United States on Israel, where they just pull out all the stops, where the Democrats pull out all the stops, oh, right. knowing that the Trump administration is on the way. So it could actually get somewhat more dangerous for Israel and in a hard. short term, for a short term. You see the shift in four years, a shift when Israel was making peace deals with Gulf state after Gulf state through the Abraham Accords. And the, the Biden administration came in and they said, eh, let's throw this out the window. Let's get this back to conflict, and that's exactly what's happened. Yeah, absolutely. I did see a comment that come in, so how can I make a donation via PayPal? You can do all of that on ACLJ.org. We have a bunch of different options, credit cards, PayPal. You can you know, submit a check if you need to. You can do that. We do encourage it. Digital is preferred. ACLJ.org. You can do that right now. It is a triple match. Triple match, match during the end here. The last couple of days of our Life and Liberty Drive. You can be a part of it. Jordan. We've got 11 cases pending right now at the U.S. Supreme Court. The most we've ever filed in. Donate today. Be part of the triple match. ACLJ.org. The situation that unfolded at uh, the UN Security Council. And this is where the United States uh, took a new move there. And they kind of called back to the Obama playbook of allowing something to pass that damages Israel by just saying, we're here, but we're not going to vote. Uh, what's, what's your readout on the abstention vote from the United States yesterday that allowed a ceasefire uh, resolution to pass? Silence is deemed consent. And the fact that the United States abstained as the U.N. handed this unbelievable victory to Hamas, to its Iranian backers, to those who wish death and destruction on Israel, on the Jews, on America— Uh, just tells you exactly what an evil turn this has taken. And I could tell you from the moment I arrived here in Israel, that's been the conversation ranging from shock and dismay to fury and anger at this betrayal by the Biden administration of the Jewish people and the state of Israel. Admiral Kirby said, because the final text does not have key language we view as essential, notably a condemnation of Hamas, we could not support it. So he's going out on television at a press conference saying we could not support it. But as you said, silence is consent in this manner. Uh, what's your your response to Admiral Kirby? This is a statement that evil wins, that it's OK to launch a massive, not just terror attack, but a, a terror. It's a war on an innocent nation against innocent men, women and children, and that the world will back you because the U.S. is in the hands of a feckless administration. And now. They're strengthening Hamas, which has always been the dominant force in Palestinian control and power. They're strengthening Hamas as the leadership, ensuring 
ensuring that if Hamas survives, which they're trying to keep, which America seems to be trying to keep happening, then they will be in control. This is nothing but other than an absolute disaster. Welcome back to Secular Yards Overseas with the European Center for Law and Justice as we are renewing our work uh, there, of course, continues on at the International uh, Court of Human Rights and also at the European Parliament. And you, you've probably, if you follow kind of conservative politics uh, in the U.S. and around the world, you've seen the rise of conservative politics all over Europe. So we're kind of, as we do with the U.S., preparing, like we have our team in D.C., we're preparing the team at the ECLJ and working together on working with these new governments that have kind of been an unknown to to Europe for the last uh, three or four decades uh, that share a lot of our views on on issues of life, uh, on issues of support for Israel, on uh, economic issues, uh, democracy, voting, uh, freedom of the press, freedom of speech. Uh, so, uh, again, it's kind of this whole new world. And what we are seeing then, too, with with our team at the U.N. is this able to, ability to reach – and put pressure on these countries like Pakistan. And you, we've talked about uh, the Shazad case in prison, on death row. And uh, Cece Hal, who was at the, uh, in Geneva for us at the United Nations, uh, so our team there was able to deliver an oral intervention at the Human Rights Council. Uh, these, are on, on, these were on video. You haven't seen this one yet. Uh, this is a new one. And we wanted to play it for you just to show you. But the ACLJ team is all over the world, active, for the persecuted, active for Israel, active for you here in the United States with those 12 pending cases uh, before the U.S. Supreme Court, making sure you have the ability to vote for the candidate of your choice in that last Supreme Court uh, victory. Uh, but again, I want you to watch this or listen, if you're listening to the show, about what we're able to do at the U.N. in calling out Pakistan in front of all the ambassadors. We will now move to the list of non-governmental organizations. Giving the floor to the European Center for Law and Justice. Thank you, Mr. President. Given the treatment of minority women in Pakistan, their forced religious conversions, and forced marriages, the ECLJ would like to commend Pakistan for recently adopting a bill raising the marriageable age for Christian girls from 13 to 16. Although that is a good step, it is still insufficient to fully protect these young Christian girls. The law should be consistent with the international standard, that is, anyone under 18 should not be allowed to marry. Additionally, with the new administration, we hope that Pakistan will finally take a serious look at the blasphemy cases in the country. The ECLJ's affiliate currently represents five innocent Christians in such cases. Shahzad Masih's and Amun Ayub's cases have been brought before this council many times. We simply ask that the government establish mechanisms to sort out false accusations, stop prosecuting innocent people who face false allegations, and expedite cases that are pending. Amun Ayub has spent over 10 years in prison. Shazad Masih has spent over six years in prison. We stand ready to work with the authorities to address these issues and work together to fulfill our obligations for justice and the protection of human rights. And as the Pakistani representative said yesterday, justice delayed is justice denied, and we agree. Thank you. And, and CC and our team have done a great job, Logan, because it's not only at the UN Human Rights Council. We have uh, the UN group on the arbitrary detention, uh, a number, I think it's, I think it's the four or five special rapporteurs just on uh, the case involving uh, involving Shazad. I think we're very close there. Of course, until they're released and released safely and securely, um, you have to assume that they are, their life is in danger. But that is what we're very close on. I want to remind people, too, Pastor Saw, who we were working on uh, for seven years, he's been imprisoned in China uh, for uh, distributing Bibles. Uh, we began representing him five years ago uh, when they, the family had kind of exhausted their domestic efforts. And ultimately, the ACLJ sticking with it, with our international team, he has been released. Uh, he has not yet been returned to the United States. And I don't know, we don't have any indication yet that he's got the to the to the U.S. Embassy yet. So we want to be very careful in uh, not providing too much information about where he is. But I do want to let you know that he is out of prison. And that's an example, Logan, of, of, the, of the kind of work that we do that isn't 
you know, over, over and done, even within like a, one term of a pre, or of a president. I mean, it's seven years in the making, but it's worth it when you're talking about a human life. Yeah, absolutely. And it is the work that the ACLJ does, whether you hear about it or not. I think it's important to know that a lot of things are happening behind the scenes. I know it's easy to say that, but it's just true. And when we were able to reveal facts like this, when you have a, a pastor saw who you may have heard about five years ago, and then you may have thought, oh, they just stopped talking about it. Well, there's reasons things get, sometimes, reasons sometimes you have quiet. to stop talking publicly because things are happening behind the scenes. And here's one of the proofs of that. He is free in the country, and we are doing what we can to get him back home uh, to his family. But again, long term, these are five, six, seven years, sometimes more uh, in the making. It's what, And sadly, and even in American law, that is sort of the process here. Not Things don't work on a rapid you know, speed way. A lot of things happen just by sticking to it, going with the process, and winning and losing and winning again, and it's just part of it. But we can't do that without the help of all of, from all of you all. Uh, obviously, our, all the legal help, like Pastor Saw's legal help, he's not, his family's not getting charged for that. Right, you know, there's yeah. no, there's no fees going, uh, to pa- Pastor Saw's, uh, uh, to, to, from him to us. None of that's happening. We, ha- we want to put the best of the best, the best lawyers we can on this. And obviously, they have families. They deserve to get paid. We can't do that though without the support. This entire organization is built on the backbone of individual supporters like you and ACLJ champions. Those are people that give monthly. And right now, those are tripled for the next couple of days. But I want you to understand the impact of the donation when it is fully. I mean, you, you could probably say 99.9%, if not more, is from uh, support, individual donation support. Absolutely. So, I mean, that is a lot of organizations don't have that. There are big grants. There's other things they're, they're selling. They're putting stuff behind paywalls. Uh, and as of right now, by the grace of God, we've had to do all that. We'll be able to give you all this content for free. Uh, and provide it to you, whether that's this show, whether that's what's on the website, and of course, the incredible legal help that you can get on the individual level, not just if your pastor saw and it's a good story. We have small, small cases that are happening all over the country. They're not small, though, on the grand scheme of things, but if you think my my problem is too small for the ACLJ, just find out, aclj.org slash help. You fill out a few you know, forms, boom, straight to a lawyer. It goes from there. Yeah, and you'll know right away because we'll contact you. If it's the kind of work that we are able to do at the ACLJ, we will let you know. We'll get, we'll get more information from you. And if and if it's not, uh, we'll let you know, too, that this is it's, – and it's not – It's there's no bad – there's no wrong reason. You're not – you just at, if you think you need the help, go to aclj.org slash help. Yeah. I want to say we've had five new champions just in the last few minutes here. Uh, so we are now under these, 80. These ACLJ champions are monthly supporters. Monthly supporters. So they pick an amount. Like you donate to your church every week. You donate to us every month. You pick an amount. It automatically charges and you your credit card, it. whatever it is you have to think about it. You can do that in a number you like. And it's easy to cancel. So if you say, hey, I can't do it anymore, it's not like everyone knows. Like That happens. But right now you can do it, and it, it's a part of our life and Liberty Drive. We're trying to get the, to that number. Because once we have a certain number and that number is consistent, now all of a sudden we have a baseline where we can start setting budgets to do even more amazing work. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing. We're able to say to, to almost every case that comes in right now, because the ACLJ champions, we don't have to think about the money part. We just have to think about the team to put together and the strategy. So, And, and that's because those ACLJ champions are at the tip of the spear. And right now, if you become an ACLJ champion and you do it at $25, you get to be part of the triple match. So that's like $75 to the ACLJ. So you still get to be part of of those matching challenge or in tri- these today triple match so become an aclj champion triple that amount today again it's what's worth to us and again you'll be at the tip of the spear for the aclj to continue its growth at aclj.org we'll be right back coming up The ACLJ fights the battles that matter most to our members. We listen to you, and we're taking action through the ACLJ Life and Liberty Drive. Every dime we receive goes to defend life and liberty, from Capitol Hill to Geneva to the United Nations. Now is the time to fight. The rights to life and liberty are the cornerstones of our constitutional republic, but they are under attack. That is why we're proud to announce the return of the ACLJ Life and Liberty Drive. This month, we're redoubling our efforts to beat back the radical left's attacks on your constitutional freedoms and to defend the sanctity of human life, not just here at home, but around the world. 
every gift you give will be doubled dollar for dollar, doubling your impact for life and liberty. Go to ACLJ.org right now and help us. Keeping you informed and engaged. Now more than ever, this is Seculo. And now your host, Jordan Seculo. All right, welcome back to Seculo. We are taking your calls, too. If you got comments uh, on it, too, you can put it on those social media sites. Uh, share it with your friends and family. Uh, and, again, uh, we know, you know we're hitting into uh, Good Friday uh, tomorrow and, of course, Easter Sunday. Uh, so uh, for many of you, this may be the last time you hear from us uh, this week on, uh, live on the broadcast uh, as you uh, celebrate with your, your friends and, and family, of course, uh, coming together. But we do want to mention that today we've got a triple match going. Uh, for the ACLJ. This is a very important month for us uh, as we prepare for kind of this, the next season of, you know, going into the, the spring and summer with, uh, you get the kind of in the school rush cases. And then in the summer, you, you get the back to school rush cases pretty quick as well. And let's not forget the election. I mean, yeah. so we've got the, those issues are, are, haven't even really started to begin yet. I mean, they're just starting to trickle in on, in, on some of these Trump cases specifically, but I just wanted people to know right now that we're, we're still heavily involved in what's happening in Israel. I mean, you know, you've heard from Jeff Balaban, who oversees our office in Jerusalem. Um, yeah, you've known since the October 7th, attack, October 7th attacks what we've done uh, for the hostages, if it's bringing them to Washington, if it's bringing them to Spain, throughout Europe, uh, to bring attention to it, we have. Uh, and, uh, you know, the Speaker of the House is bringing attention uh, to them. Uh, some have been released. Some have uh, some have lost their lives. A uh, hundred still remain. We do not know the status. We don't know if all a hundred are alive, but we do know about a hundred hostages still remain. And yet, at the Security Council at the United Nations, where the U.S. has a permanent seat, and also that means a veto, and they can veto anything. That means all it takes the U.S. to stop it. There's a resolution that was put forward by the U.S to call for a ceasefire, but that ceasefire also uh, mentioned that uh, you have to return the hostages, both living and dead, and stop the attacks on Israel. And then Israel would cease, stop the attacks on uh, the Gaza Strip. And the U.S., that was voted down by two permanent members. It was uh, China and Russia. So you'd think the U.S. would not accept their ceasefire resolution which removed any language condemning Hamas slogan. I mean, think about that. Not even That's condemning Hamas, <laughs> not even condemning Hamas for what they did to people on October 7th. Leave out the rest of the war. Just what they did to children on October 7th and 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 women and and the elderly and the hostage taking. They would it's not there. You won't find it. Uh, they don't talk about hostages. And yet the, the US veto it so it didn't pass cuz they could have done a veto, and that means that would have killed the resolution. No, they abstained for the first time. After three times voting no, they abstained. And Logan, they say, and that's Jean -Pierre, it's supposed to be a win for us. Karine Jean Pierre says it's not about politics, as we played in that soundbite. It's all about politics because the base of their party has been the younger voter or the, that kind of college campus liberal city voter. And that voter, in this last, I'd say, Logan, since October 7th, has become radicalized in support of the Palestinian movement yeah, with, least, like, blinders on their eyes to the violence that caused this conflict. Yeah, I'd say it's probably the week after October, the, when the response said, started happening. Yeah. We said, I remember you on text Once threads immediately that saying... That takes any action. The, the world will change. It'll yeah. go from you two saying we stand with the, uh, you know, the stars of David and the children of Israel to being like, well, now there's uh, problems on both sides, and they're the ones probably on... The most oddly conservative side of it. We've obviously had a lot of liberal voices speaking out specifically. We also have some great voices, by the way, like our friend John from Five for Fighting, who has been out there, Patricia Heaton, and some people who have been friends of this organization, friends of this broadcast, uh, who are out there actually doing the work and trying to spread the word. And I posted a, a great speech that John gave uh, to a bunch of high school students and a bunch of college students. I encourage everyone to go watch that. I think I posted it on my ex account, so go do that. Uh, we are going to be back. We would love to take some of your phone calls. I do have a couple lines open right now. So 1-800-684-3110. Get your voice in. Heading into this Easter holiday. 
What are you feeling? What does it feel for you right now? What are the emotions in your community, in your church, specifically even related to what's going on in the Middle East, as it was back then happening in the Middle East? We'll be right back. Israeli Prime Minister is defending his decision not to send a high-level delegation to Washington. That followed the U.S. abstaining from a vote on the U.N. Security Council uh, for a resolution calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. My decision not to send the delegation to Washington in the wake of that resolution was a message to Hamas. It was a message, first and foremost, to Hamas, don't bet on this pressure, it's not going to work. Biden campaign officials, they will acknowledge that this is something that, A, they're taking seriously and keeping an eye on, and B, they're recognizing that it is impacting the president's support. Everybody deserves health care. They have a point. We need to get a lot more care into the cause. No way that they can... Um, appease a lot of these protesters and, and members of their coalition. This is not about politics. It's not. The president does not lead his national security or things that are the right thing to do in this sense, right? Getting that hostage deal, making sure uh, hostages come home, including, as I said, over and over again, American hostages getting that humanitarian aid into Gaza and making sure that it, it, we believe that would lead to a ceasefire. That is not about politics. Past Joe Biden supporters who are growing increasingly frustrated with him over his Israel policy. It is a terrible decision for America. It's a terrible decision for Israel. And it will drive a great many Jewish Democrats like me away from voting for the Biden administration. Where are the Democrats having their convention this year? Chicago. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Can't wait. Yeah, I and, and just as Amisha <laughs> says, there's a large uh, Palestinian-American population yep. in Chicago. Uh, are we headed for real trouble for the Democrats uh, in I, Chicago I expect this year? there to be some protests, assuming that this uh, conflict is still going on. There hasn't been some resolution by then. We're only 79 champions away. We may be from... less. Than we need to get an update. Yeah, let's do it. Let's find out. I can find it. It updates like every five minutes on our report. So we'll see. We've got time. How many Will? champions? Two. I mean, two more of you. And here's the thing. I'm going to say something about this because that may sound like two people. Logan, why do you care? I understand that lots of people give individual donations. That happens all day, every day. Yeah, we are so appreciative of that work. But that is very. What we've built this organization on is those single donations. Really only in the last six months have we decided to focus at all on ACLJ, what we call ACLJ champions, monthly recurring donors, again, to build a baseline so we can do our work, which is amazing. So we hit 20,000 of those. But look, in a day, a good day, we're hitting, you know, it, it not, we're not talking about the same amount of donations. You're talking about adding 10 people, adding five new champions, adding 10 new champions is a incredible feat. Cut back to me. There you go. But... During the broadcast, we know we're able to have a direct feed to you. We're right now in the palm of your hand, potentially, if you're watching on a social media or you're listening on radio right now. And if we're, I'm in the palm of your hand right now. Like, like a little baby. That's an interesting way of putting it. Yes, go to, like a small kitten, go to aclj.org, become a champion, because our goal was 25, was, was 20,000 new champions, or 20,000 champions total. And then we hit that goal two weeks into this drive, which was amazing, and, you know, incredibly thankful, incredibly blessed. And we said, what if we did a stretch goal? What if we could actually do that? So the stretch goal was to add an additional 500. We are only 70, what was it? 77 away. 77 away. So go to aclj.org. And again, you can cancel any time. It's at the donation level of your choice. And you can do it. All you have to do is when you're making a donation, opt in to be a champion. And right now, today, you will get the uh, added benefit of the triple match. Yes. So any donation at aclj.org today uh, usually it's a match, you know, so we match the donation. But today, in these final three days of our matching challenge uh, this month, uh, March, you will uh, you will actually get a triple match. So if you become a champion, you'll still take part in that, which means today if you became a champion at $20 a month, that would be like a $60 donation to the ACLJ today. Uh, and you will still be able to, that, that, those donations will still get to be part of match months. So, uh, again, very important. Uh Triple matches don't come around often. We don't do it every month uh, that we have a matching challenge or even uh, even once or twice a year, sometimes not at all. 
but we've got the resources available for you from donors that are ready to make sure the ACLJ's got the resources to go to the next level. We know that the lawfare uh, that we've seen around the world has come to the United States. I mean, I'm already talking to people, Logan, who are saying, you know, if Republicans are able to take back uh, the executive branch of the White House in the next election cycle, how concerned they, they are going to be about having legal bills just because they take a job inside of what may be a potential Trump administration. They are, they are concerned yeah. about that already this many months out. Yeah. How, how can I protect myself? Uh, so there's going to have to be a lot of ACLJs out there ready to defend people just who want to serve in the U.S. government uh, because of the lawfare that has come to the United States of America. And we know that's happening. You want to take some phone calls? Absolutely. Let's go to uh, Joanne, who's calling in Ohio, watching on ACLJ.org, which we appreciate. You're on the air. Hi, guys. Um, real quick, I remember your father saying after Trump won that those last 90 days were when Obama was going to do his worst. So this kind of goes along the same thing of what you were saying. Yeah. But that's not really why I called. I just want to acknowledge the passing of Joe Lieberman, sure. a strong, yeah. staunch supporter of Israel, spoke out against Hamas. You know, I saw him a few days ago on Newsmax. I mean, this is such a tragedy. I mean, he's one of the few reasonable Democrats that were out there speaking truth. And I just think it needs to be acknowledged. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, obviously we you know, send our love and uh, prayers to Joe Lieberman's family. Uh, whether you agree with them or disagree with them on other topics, there were certain things, like a lot of old school Democrats, that we could agree with. And look, I would even know oh, this is crazy. Until Chuck Schumer's weird turn against Netanyahu... Chuck Schumer was kind of one of those guys where you didn't agree with on almost anything, but was one of the leading voices in support of Israel when no one else was. Sadly, even he has been turned now, right. a Schumer, in, in that situation going, what's wow. was the voice of, like the one thing he, we could agree with him on was his pretty much unwavering Zionism. Yes, and, and now... And if he disagreed with Israel, it would be behind the scenes. He wouldn't take yes. a speech... Uh, give a major speech calling for an Israeli president to be removed and yeah. other countries duly elected it's leader. Again, someone just to dealing be with the the sad society of where uh, the Democratic Party yeah, is I right mean, now. I have a, one uh, friend I would say is Democrat, and uh, Jared Moskowitz, a congressman from Florida, who's uh, he's just kind of a thorn in the side of Republicans on yeah, he's some of the Fox committees. He's a lot, which probably says a lot. Yeah, he's, he's kind of a funny guy. And, uh, and, and, and he, is, he is funny, and, and, and again, I think he tries to light up some of the more heavy things on the Congress is taking on. But when it comes to Israel, he's got very strong support. And, uh, you know, he's he, he's a young guy, so he's in that, even in a minority within a minority of his party, yeah. that he's got that support. And that, uh, again, the pressure in the party is to not. And I think that is why it is so sad to lose. And there, and there is a nerves of the more sort of libertarian-leaning version of the Republican Party, mm -hmm. the more... Starting, they I mean, we, we've kind of seen that with Rogan, and that, that kind of crowd do does we really seem need to, to be lean. so supportive. Yeah, or what, and, and to, to start quite, and look, I, I think question authority at all times. Sure. And, There's and, no reason to even, I'm not even saying you have to agree with the actions that Israel is taking, but you can at least agree that there's a purpose of why they're taking these actions. Yes. And they're not, uh, again, when it comes to Israel, Israel's not asking for our troops. They, we, we do, t we actually do a lot of research and technology together. A lot of the, the technology developed in Israel because it's close combat fighting, including the Iron Dome is so that when we have massive troop deployments, we're able to set up those systems yeah. overhead of our troops. Yeah. Uh, they use it to protect their citizens. But So that's a joint effort between the United States and Israel. That's something that we benefit from as well because we get to see how it works in a country that unfortunately has to deal with it regularly, being citizens being fired upon by rocket fire. So I think that that's where the libertarians need to check it out, check for a moment and realize we are gaining from that. We gain from that relationship. It's not just a give from the U.S. It's a give and take. Yeah, let's go ahead and take this call because it kind of ties in. Elaine in New York on line one. You're on the air. Hey, Watch Elaine. it on YouTube. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask why if the world is so um, so concerned about the Palestinian people that nobody has offered to take the refugees Take the women, take the children, open the gates to, to Egypt, even if it's temporarily, just to get rid of the, the terrorists. See, Elaine, I don't know if we can pull the picture that quickly. How secure the border is between Egypt and the Gaza Strip? I mean, it is, Logan, like, it looks, it, it is not even like our southern border. 
I mean, it's got the walls up, fences up, and yeah. literally every two seconds. Yeah, we've been there. We've you've seen got it. you've got not like you've got troop movers and yeah. like like that are guns out, ready to go if anybody tries to climb that fence, touch that fence. It's a real border. It's a really it's an armed border uh, with military because they do not trust what the what a mass movement of migrants from those territories would do inside their own countries. The Jordanians tried it, and a king was killed. So guess what? They're not going to be a part of this. Yeah. Uh, so that has been one of the issues, is that uh, those some of those countries have opened up before historically, and it's been to their detriment. Now, I will say the reason why internationally you get this support, Logan, is that look at the money in the Arab world. The Arab world has got money to throw around. Yeah, like like you know, just like China's doing. Look, there's uh, a, you at the Arab world. Reason they did actually during the Abraham Accords and all that strive for peace. And it may not have been because they were agreeing with Israel all of a sudden politically. It's because the financial Good incentives economics. were absurd. Because all of a sudden you had Israelis able to visit these countries, vacation. Work. You know, you could have a lot. And they're they could very close their, to each other. They could visit their holy sites uh, that were in Jerusalem. You could do business together. You could you could fly. I mean, it, again. There was that hope that again that that that, that the whole, the U.S. is kind of centered on internationally, which is that if you can economically work together um, and build things together, that you're not going to be uh, enemies. Now that hasn't necessarily played out in every country. China is a good example of that, but but in the most part, the Biden administration just didn't even try to continue that. They just went right back to the same theory, which is no peace in the Middle East. Until the Palestinian question is solved, so we're going to force that back on all these states, and they're going to all have to uh, do the the Palestinian. You got the picture of the border? Yeah, check it out. That is the that is what a secure border looks like, and that's the Egyptian border with Gaza Strip. Look at that, Logan. Yeah, I mean that's a, that's what you'd kind of somewhat more than we have a border max prison. Yeah, it's pretty intense looking. Now, if we had that in our southern border, do you think a hundred thousand plus people would be dying from fentanyl every year? Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, it is obviously a much smaller border. It's oh, it's easier to do, yeah. but, but we we're a much bigger country that we could easily do that on our southern border in the areas that need it. Double double fencing, tall. Every kind yeah. Of for those that are not watching, uh, we're just describing. Though a lot of you are just listening. Just Google it. Uh, Very you intense know. wall situation. Yeah, this is between. Like you said, it looks like a maximum security prison in the middle of the desert. So uh, again, when they say all oh, the Israelis, they're not doing anything to help humanitarily. Look at look at Egypt. They're not, I mean, nobody's getting across that border if they don't want them to. Uh, not even thinking about it. Uh, 1-800-684-3110 if you want to be part of the show. And Logan, again, special matching moment because it's a triple match. And champions, Logan. We're growing them. Yes. We are. We'll get 71 champions away. So that means even more of you, actually. Another five or six. I know, again, that doesn't sound crazy, but for us, that is. It's just an amazing new group of people joining us. Let's get that number even lower as we head towards that goal. Go to ACLJ. Org. Right now, we'll do a final update at the end of the next segment, and we're going to take your calls coming up. NGOs, non-government organizations like the ECLJ, which is an accredited NGO at the United Nations, uh, can go and deliver a message based on whatever the topic that they are addressing is. They normally have an agenda item. So one of the agenda items is Pakistan. And so in that oral intervention, we're bringing up the persecution of our own client in Pakistan. That's one that we'll play for you tomorrow. But Israel, an agenda item, as happens to be often at the UN Human Rights Council, because they love to hate Israel at the UN Human Rights Council, uh, afforded us an opportunity to go there and speak uh, on behalf of defense of Israel. And so this is Cece Heil in Geneva. Israel faced one of the worst attacks by Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and other terrorist groups from the Gaza Strip. Over 1,200 Israelis were brutally killed, including men, women, children, infants, and the elderly. Women were raped and mutilated. Dead bodies were desecrated. The terrorists bragged about these atrocities. There's no doubt that Hamas's actions constituted crimes against humanity. This council must unequivocally condemn Hamas for its war crimes against Israel and affirm Israel's inherent right to self-defense. Really powerful stuff that's happening all around the world thanks to your support. I mean, really, that's all it is, is thanks to your support. We wouldn't be able to afford the travel alone. And the, that cost alone, as you know, as someone who's probably traveled world, worldwide, you know that that is not something to take lightly. 
So we have to be able to do these things. We have to be able to work all over the world. We have to have offices in Israel, in Washington, D.C. Uh, we have you know, satellite offices around the country and around the world. In Strasbourg, France, the uh, European Union, we are wherever we can be. We have a representation at the U.N., whether you like it, or like them or not, someone's got to be there for your voice. And we are really blessed to be able to do that. You know, I don't take that lightly at all. Logan, I mean, Good Friday is tomorrow. We will have a show, but uh, we're not going to force our whole team in on Good Friday. Uh, and uh, so we we want you to know that, uh, again, and we know many of you uh, will have different schedules on Good Friday as well, uh, but we will have a broadcast for you, and you will still be able to be part, uh, can become an ACLJ champion through the weekend and be part, Logan, of that triple match. I'm going to do it because this is the last segment. I'm, I'm live with folks, and this triple match is an incredible opportunity. It doesn't come up up that often but this when maybe the second time ever yeah so what it does a donor that uh, i'm talking to uh, you out there folks and you're thinking you know my donation won't really impact aclj well as logan has said we are a unique organization in that we do not uh we are not primarily funded by large donations we are primarily funded by donations under 45 dollars so your 20 dollar donation a month if you became an aclj champion uh, again, that's 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 right in the the ACLJ's uh, uh, kind of like right in the key for us, and and you will be at the tip of the spear. But today, if you made that uh, champion donation, you made a decision to donate that monthly, that would actually be like sixty dollars for us because of this triple match, Logan. I mean, that's that's unique uh, for the, for this matching challenge. But I just wanted to underscore that to people that that adds up very quickly, so that when we see something around in the, the United States. If we see something that needs to, ha- a call comes in and we need to put a team of four or five attorneys on it immediately. If we need to fly people halfway around the world tomorrow, we can. Yeah, absolutely, and we, we don't can have to do even that. think about the cost. That's what we would love for it to be. And having ACLJ champions is that goal because you already have a estimated baseline of where you're going to hit. Obviously, we have an incredible team, a fundraising team, a media team. I always say, I wish I could turn the camera around and not just show you what's going on in this studio, what's going on. Uh, in our offices here, and our offices literally around the world. Uh, let's go ahead and take a phone call. Let's go to Carlos, who is calling from New York. Big New York Day, which has been fun. Carlos, you're on the air. Hey, Carlos. Thank you, and thank you for everything you do. You're right on target with everything you mentioned, uh, with actual facts to support it. Thank God you. bless you guys. You're welcome. Uh, being raised myself in a beautiful Jewish household, uncle's of Auschwitz survival, last name is Edelstein. I learned to have true value, and I also learned that for, for the price of peace, peace costs a price. Right. Yeah. So God bless you, and may you guys continue to bring hope and enlightenment in people's faith and hope every day as they struggle, because you guys give real news with facts. And that's what we try to do here is, you know, we, we obviously, are, a lot of us are attorneys, and we'll, when we analyze that, we're very honest with you about where we think, uh, cases are going. Uh, if we think it's going to take, you know, hey, we might lose the district court, the court of appeals, but we feel good about the state supreme court, or uh, we feel good about the district court, not the court of appeals, but the U.S. Supreme Court. You know, we don't we don't sugarcoat it here. Uh, when we do our analysis of other issues and the policy, we've got a whole policy arm at the ACLJ, both domestic and international policy. We don't sugarcoat it, Logan. We we tell people uh, the truth, and when it's when it's bad news, it's bad news. When it's good news, it's good news, and when it's a time to fight, it's time to fight. I have said that every time, but what makes our show unique is that I think because we're not behind a paywall, because this show is free and we are supported by ACLJ supporters, no one tells us what we can or cannot say. We are always telling you the truth. We are giving you the facts, whether you like it or whether you don't. And I hate sometimes when people go after me in the comments, they're like, you're saying this. Like, we're never going to lie to you. We're going to tell you the truth. We're going to give you the point of view of what is happening around the world and really what you can actually anticipate instead of, you know, tickling your ear and telling you, oh, look, this is going to happen. This, you know, one, you know, if you get a lot of those push notifications, I feel like that, that tell you something's going to happen. But because we're a legal organization, uh, we're actually having to, and we want to tell you the truth. Let's continue on. Let's go to Robert. Watch it on YouTube in the state of Washington. Go ahead. Hey, Robert. Hi. Uh, I just called, I'm just calling about, uh, that uh, that this is all about votes, 
that Biden is losing a lot of votes. And, you know, I believe that the United States is going to pull away from Israel eventually somewhere. I mean, you can only see it happening. It does feel that way. Surely. I think we're right on the edge. Mm-hmm. Abby, I think this election will be the deciding point. Because if you do another four years of the Biden team, the next step, once you start abstaining, is to actually voting uh, for resolutions that condemn Israel. And so you're no longer that trustworthy ally for Israel who stands in the way of their condemnation uh, at the U.N., which they are the most condemned country in the world at the United Nations, uh, the most condemned over every issue. It's, think about all the countries in the world with massive human rights issues and are da- that pose dangers to the entire world. But yet it's Israel of 7 million people that gets condemned more than any other country in the world. The U.S., at the Security Council used to be that a vote you could count on to end the most threatening condemnation, which is the, con- the, the condemnation that comes out of the Security Council, because that is real. The General Assembly is kind of a, these non-binding resolutions. I mean, the Security Council could be a, a vote away right now from sending in peacekeepers to, to, to stop the war. And let me tell you, last time they did that it, with Israel, the peacekeepers were working with the terrorists to tar- target Israeli military troops. Yeah, hey, I just want to give you an update. We are now at 20,435 champions. Uh, so we are only, what does that make us, 65? 65, 65 away from hitting that goal. We started this broadcast over 80. Uh, so this is an amazing yeah, yeah, they, they, move uh, just in the last hour. So we think we can hit this goal. We can't do it without you. So if you are waiting, if you're waiting for the show to be over, that's okay. We know it's over in two minutes here. But if you don't, go ahead and do it now. Go to aclj.org. We were 89 away at the start of the show. 89 away. So it's a pretty big move because of people who are, like I said, I know we're in the palm of your hand. I understand we're providing you this content absolutely for free, and we want to continue to do that and obviously do the incredible legal work. And when you do it today, yep, you're getting part of the triple match. And the triple match, you said you've only done, we've only done it one other time before? I believe so. I believe one so, other time. So, okay. Maybe so two. If you became I mean, not a, often. If you were someone who said, you know what, I can do $50 monthly. Um, today... You would become an ACLJ champion at fifty dollars, but you would also take get to take part in that triple match. That would be the equivalent of a hundred and fifty dollars for the ACLJ. Or if you're one of those there says, you know what, I can do ten bucks. Well, today that's thirty. That would be like thirty for the ACLJ. So it's a great time to become an ACLJ champion because you're you're tripling even uh, what it's worth to us this month. But you're also saying, hey, I'm going to be with you next month at this amount. And we're able to plan uh, to know that we can we we don't have to worry about making decisions based off cost. That doesn't mean we're going to make bad uh, decisions with the money that you donate. What it means is that we don't have to think about a case. Oh, this case is too big, or that this is going to cost too much travel, or this one might take five years and uh, it might not you know be on the news as much. Uh, that entire five years, so we don't want to do that yeah. one. We only want to do what Fox News covers for two Pastor minutes. I think Pastor Saw is, the, is really one of those moments. Perfect where you go, example go, of it. Go, we had a big campaign. We had to go dark on it publicly. And guess what happened? He's free now. So that is amazing work of the ACLJ that sometimes takes years and years of work through multiple people, multiple outlets, multiple options. We're exploring everything where we can go, whether that's in the media, whether that's in the law. We can't do it without you. Thank you for joining us. Happy Easter, everyone. We will have a new broadcast for you tomorrow, including, again, our talk with Jeremiah Johnson, Body of Proof, his book. Take a look at that. But also, uh, again, we just want to say thank you. Continue work. Continue to support ACLJ. If you're brand new to the broadcast, you're watching on YouTube or Rumble or anywhere else, subscribe, follow, do all of that. We really appreciate it. We do this broadcast each and every day, Monday through Friday, and then plus tons of content that comes out throughout the week. But ACLJ.org right now, triple match. You One of the few times ever. Only lasts for a couple days, so do it right now. ACLJ.org. Have a great Easter.